Greetings, humanoids. <laughs> Welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here today with Mike. Yo. Christy. Matt. Cheers. And John. Peace. I'm going to start today with Matt's Beer Corner. So what do you got for us today, Matt? Delicious IPA. It's delicious. 7.7% from Stone. Yeah, really good. I like it better than their regular IPA. So. Is it called delicious? Lot. Yes, delicious really? IPA. Really? Call it What do you think of their hops? <laughs> it's good. Uh, lemon drop and Eldorado hops. I love Eldorado hops. So. It's a real citrusy? Yeah, it, it's citrusy, but uh, Eldorado hops are described as candy-like. They're very good. Candy-like. Candy-like. Yes. Interesting. That's what I've heard them described as, at least. I would never think of hops as being candy-like. But I can believe it. But the Eldorado, man, they're very good. All right, all right. I'll take your word for it, or try that later. What do they do? Agarist Ale is used them in their uh, Liberto IP. Ah, those yes. guys are clever. Those <laughs> guys are clever. <laughs> yeah, they make good beer. <laughs> Great beer. So what are we talking about this episode? Brainwashing. Brainwashing, that's right. Yeah. Maybe this I is not a form of brainwashing. brainwashing. This is not a form of brainwashing. <laughs> All the other countries suck. That's, that's <laughs> pretty good. If, it, if, if those aren't familiar with this, is not brainwashing. It's yeah, a, uh, Whitest Kids You Know, right? Was, yeah, um, Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah, yeah, yeah they did Pledge of Allegiance. Look that up on YouTube, it'll come up. It's yeah, fun. yeah, yeah. You could probably just put in Pledge Everyone of Allegiance. Everyone come up here and get your riddle in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how they end it. All right, kids, everybody come up here and get your ribbon. It's a YouTube video? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You haven't seen that? No. I swear I've shown the TV. Rev Not School Sucks runs that. Yes. Yeah, in the intro at one point yeah. or another. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Add that to my have to watch list. Yeah. Yeah, so brainwashing. Uh, this might delve a little into conspiracy theorists, though. A lot of what we're going to talk about is declassified, so it's it's stuff that yeah. Uh, MK Ultra is a prime example. Okay, what is MK Ultra? I can ask you now. <laughs> <laughs> MK Ultra was a project run by the government to brainwash people back in the what the fifties. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it went into the 60s, too, because, uh, you know, it's not, uh, a good portion of it, like, involved acid and all that, oh, and yeah. experimenting with people on that. Uh, the guy who wrote One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest was actually involved in NKUltra. He, he mm -hmm. was in the Army, he participated in it, and, yeah. Kaczynski. Yeah, uh, yeah, Theodore Kaczynski was also in that too. So the bomber. The bomber. That was yeah. Say, yeah. yeah. Wow. So that that that's kind of an interesting. Oh, I didn't time. know the connection. Really. And another one. There's another wow. prominent figure. I'm trying to remember who it might be, but it's also uh, from that. Saran Saran. I can't remember. I don't. I don't I can't. That that might be up there with rumor. I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. that, that could be something that was confirmed. But I've heard that before. Yeah. So was that his motive for all the bombings? Because uh, he was... Well, did he, he have the motive? <laughs> was it his motive oh, or someone else's? Wow. Okay. But he, as I recall, he was anti-technology, and maybe that had influenced yeah. his his path of, of dissidence, if you will, maybe. If you were exposed to lots of acid and also being tried to have your, your, your thoughts manipulated, uh, I could see where it could be a very traumatic event. The gentleman who wrote um, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest apparently kind of enjoyed it. You know, he said it was really, you know, he said it was strange because they had put him in, and there's like audio recording of him actually on acid involved in the MK. Shock therapy too, do you know? If I don't know if they did, on him, I don't know if they did shock therapy, but they gave him acid for like a week, and he was in a white room and, uh, you know, white room, white sheets, everything was just, you know, except for the device that was recording him, which is, you know, some, you know, gunmetal gray tape, you know, thing. And he, he seemed to deal with it okay. He said the, actually the most traumatic part of the, experiment, of, the, of the experiment on him was the fact that everything was white. That's what bugged him the most, was that he was just, he said it would have been a lot easier on him if, it, if he wasn't in such a sterile environment, which I thought was kind of an interesting take mm. on that. 
Interesting. But all that comes from uh, the Texas? Nazis. No, yeah, like uh, the paper oh, clips. Yeah, yeah. So that's the avenue into, yeah. into this country, right? So through paper clips, through us getting these uh, uh, Nazi scientists, yeah, psychopathic Nazi scientists to come in here and uh, giving them a green light to to continue their programs over on the U.S. So I'm sure uh, the Soviets siphoned off a few too, but. Yeah, and, and op Operation Paperclip, for, for those watching who, who might not know what it is, it, it's, it's fairly common knowledge now, I, I guess. But um, that was, after World War II, there was this rush by both uh, the United States and Russia to get these German scientists who were incredibly intelligent but also very maniacal. From what they, you know, they were they were the ones testing on the Jews and yeah, the yeah. babies and yeah. they yeah they they should have or at least most of them should have been in the Nuremberg trials but right. got out of it simply because of their uh, their scientific abilities and so there was this rush to get both of them and the the it was called in the United States what they called it was Operation Paperclip was to get as many of these scientists signed on to to the the Western side if you will uh, after the war yeah, there, there was a the father of aviation medicine here in America was a Nazi scientist and he was putting people in a pressure chamber taking them equivalent to up to 50,000 feet or whatever and then take them out right away submerged them underwater split their skull to see if there was oh. air bubbles coming what? out of the skull right yeah this guy was taken out given pardon here in the United States, and there's a monument of him uh, up somewhere as the father of, of oh aviation medicine. Yeah. Wow. Wow, and yeah. it's all built, and this, these are German. These were, right. um, yeah. wow. Yeah. Not oh, just Germans, but specifically Nazis, you know? Right. I mean, yeah. these were people who were, who were towing the line and, you know, doing what the Fuhrer wanted them to do, or, and, you know, and quite often for a few of them, whatever the hell they wanted to do. You know, they were you know, given human test subjects, you know, the, 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 the Jews, your gypsies, your, your political malcontents, whoever may have been put into a concentration camp, if they wanted to experiment on somebody, they would do it. But they did that over in Germany, not here, correct? Right. Yeah. But, but, but still, I mean, yeah. that's, yeah. yeah. But, they, they, but, they, but there's a statue here of them for them? Well, here yeah. they were given yeah. prisoners oh, and, yeah, and military just... members. Yeah. Because that, that, that part of their history was expunged. You know, they were, they, they were given pardon, essentially. And the, the general public wasn't aware of that. They had no reason even to believe, you know, that their government was capable of such a thing, actually. But Despite the concentration camps that we had for the Japanese. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there were... Not uh, we, but the U.S. government. Yes. yes. There we go. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Mm -hmm. Shortly after... That, that, that was my brainwashing yeah. <laughs> coming through still. Uh, shortly after the war, there were, there were uh, black kids in orphanages in Chicago that were being tested on. And that, they, that, is, that is something that is wow. probably out of all the weird you know, brainwashing, experiment sort of stuff that, that was going on, that is probably the, the most disturbing. Is that the, the and they were doing that up in, up so through the seventies. Well, yeah, that, Oregon still had the they had an official Oregon Department of Eugenics into like no. nineteen eighty two or eighty three. So it's like early eighties when wow. they yeah. yeah. So I mean they've been they've been really looking into brainwashing, psychology, all of this. I mean including psychiatry, mm -hmm. using drugs. Yeah. There, there are there are a lot of different methods they use that they've researched <laughs> in controlling people. Yeah. Uh, and, and it, the other thing that we need, to, I think, which should be discussed is the effect of certain ways of thinking has on not only on the mind but on your genetics. You can actually change your genetics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, John was, you were talking about epigenetics. Yeah, that's a, that's a new, new, new phrase coined by Mark Passio. If you're inter if you're interested or know of his research, but yeah, he speaks to epigenetics. And basically, epigenetics is, uh, whereas before 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, and before that even, uh, back to like the turn of the century, you had uh, eugenics which was physically castrating or, or sterilizing people, uh, abortion, that kind of thing. Even categorizing forced, them. Forced like, abortion. Yeah, specifically yeah. forced. For, forced, yeah. forced sterilization. 
of quote unquote undesirables, the quote unquote feeble minded, uh, minorities, anybody that they deemed undesirable. Whereas now you have epigenetics, which is changing through through culture, through the media, the minds of people, specifically women, to breed out the undesirable traits, the the uncontrollable. Not only that, but you, you can even... By, or by, less controllable. By putting... Like, look at the media today. It's all about fear and stress and all of this stuff mm-hmm. that that is that makes your body, you know... Absolutely. Uh, create a stress response. You uh, Any sort of stress, if you're... It causes inflammation. It's the leading, like, cause of disease, I'd say. Yeah. And not only that, are you... You guys familiar with the name Max Martin? Not ringing a bell. Max Martin has written nearly every pop oh, single yeah. since 1990. Wow. That's just trippy. Yeah, and then there were, oh, uh, uh, I guess since we're talking about music. But in all genres? No, pop music. Oh, pop, pop. Music. okay. Yeah. Right. So uh, he's delved into other genres as well, but pop music, and pop music has been shown through studies to be, to be... Uh, mind altering. What's well, mind altering? Yes, uh, but uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Music is very um, powerful. Su- suggestive. Yes, I'm, I'm thinking of something specific though. Um, it's suggestive though. Um, addictive. Addictive. That's the oh, word I'm addictive. looking for. Wow. So that uh, that's one of the reasons why. Despite everybody saying that they hate pop music, it's so popular. Yeah, and uh, I was now I, I was aware of this company. I'm I'm pro- I'm sure they're they're still around. Probably they may have a different name now or something. But there was a company in the mid late '90s that was called The Matrix. Creepy enough, it's called The Matrix, a company. A company. Mm-hmm. And what they specifically did was write lyrics for pop stars. Most of Britney Spears' music at the time was written by The Matrix, and a which couple is of, probably which is Max probably Martin. Yeah, yeah, which may wow. which may actually he may have been or one primar- of primarily Max Martin. Max Martin Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh no! We don't have tinfoil hats for this episode. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Tim for the background. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so and then you have. Um, you know, to delve in a little bit more into the conspiracy side, mm. Mm. who's to say that Max Martin actually wrote the songs accredited to him? Right. Do we have photographic? It could proof? just be the face of it, just right, like absolutely. like like uh, Tesla's uh, nemesis, Bell. Bell. Yeah. Uh, Alexander. No. Uh, uh, was it Edison. That? Edison. Edison. Yes. Edison. Edison didn't invent anything. Oh, he was bad. he was popular, and so his name got put on all the oh, patents. The yeah, he no, was a businessman. Well. Yeah, he was paying people to come up with the right film. He and had he had a team yeah. of like a hundred scientists. Uh-huh, uh-huh. To speak to what Matt was saying, though, um, I think we spoke about uh, uh, the experiment with the rats uh, getting exposed to a smell. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. And then uh, they uh, would shock the floor after these rats were exposed to the scent. And they would then, when exposed to the scent, start to exhibit fear and anxiety mm. symptoms of shaking. A great, a great one, just like this. Shaking and jumping off the floor, so, even when not shocked. So here's right? a good one. They did the same thing with humans, but different. They didn't do the shocking. So what they did was, they they took people, and while they were asleep, they had this machine that would create scents, and they they uh, they would associate different sounds with different scents. And when uh, the people were not sleeping. Anytime that they um, would smell that, or sorry, anytime they would hear that noise, they would associate it with that smell. So just by hearing the noise, they they, they were tracking their breathing. Uh, they would they would hold their breath or breathe deeply based on if it was a good or bad smell. Right, right. So they could associate these smells with a the noise. Right. 
it, and they had no idea right. why they were holding their breath or not. They, they didn't even realize they were doing it. And so that, in the rat experiment where the babies were taken away and never exposed to electric shock or taught to the fear of the smell, like at the 80 percentile rate, they exhibited fear and anxiety associated with the smell, even though they'd never been expi- exposed to it before. So it shows genetic wow, memory. I was gonna say, it yeah, proves genetic memory. It, but or? but that only that just simply reinforces the monarch butterfly, and that's why the monarch mind control program. Hmm. The, uh, the monarch takes three generations to get, to complete its its migratory route. So that means the third generation never was at the first. So there's butterflies completing the journey that have never been there, yet they do it every time. So there's genetic memory. So the point is, is there's genetic memory going into things. Epigenetics. Right, so that we've been programmed with fear. Things that, so things like 9-11, which was such a huge collective uh, event as far as our psyche is considered, it could have uh, been genetically written onto us. There was, so there was a down, study that just came out recently that showed that depression negatively affects you genetically. Yeah, it changes the length of uh, epigenetics. Man. That's right. Yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah. And, yeah, but they say that once you recover from it, that that effect is gone. Hmm. But I, I, another interesting one is um, Tuma meditation. I think is a good one. You, your, your, uh, you, you can. Act, there's. They've studied monks in the Himalayas who. Meditate with I think wet we were sheets on their naked the naked bodies, day, we're trying to, and <laughs> right, and they uh, they can actually raise their body temperature, I believe, it's 17 degrees. But the same guy who studied these monks in the Himalayas came up with this meditation called um, he calls it the relaxation response. It's the re- the repetition of the phrase "Oh well, peace" over and over. For 15 minutes a day, you, you slowly breathe in and out and repeat the phrase, phrase some, OLP. Yeah, so it's like a, some sort of yeah, mantra. Yeah. Exactly. But he studied well, these people. I thought it was I thought it was that you you say OLP when something pops into your mind. No, it's 15 minutes a day. Uh, oh, okay. And he, he studied these people, and he, they tested their genetics before and after. And they gene that is responsible for inflammation actually the the switch was turned off like their their inflammation response Are you serious? was turned off yeah so wow. that they, they, they actually changed them genetically and they have evidence of this and hmm. so it's the vibration from oh well peace it, it's 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 something with the relaxation sitting down and, and just relaxing is probably a good yeah. way to put it down right from so it's vibrations this, one of the yeah Elemental right. energies and oh, forces well, in the world. Right? Oh, well, I'm yeah, try so that. I, I, I would suggest like I don't know. I don't know exactly how the best way to do it. I don't know exactly what he says. It was on. Um, oh well, peace is just something calming. to say though. I, I, I you, think it's you could probably substitute that for anything that you find calming. Yeah, I, I would. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, but if you did any kind of meditation, I, I've done it where you can breathe in and say yeah. oh well, and then peace on the way out. Whatever you want to do, really. yeah. whatever. Probably comes. I could make up something and tell you what right. it means. Right, and, and, and you would you brainwash it, me. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but but, the, <laughs> but the, I guess the the point of this was just the thoughts that are in your head actually change your genetics. You, you can turn on and off different genes That's just by genetic. thinking the way you're thinking. So hmm. it, it's important to. Realize all these things and how you can be manipulated. I mean, there's, there's. Uh, have you heard of neuro linguistic programming? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. another one. Yeah. That's. Uh, it's, so it's yeah. almost a form. I would, I would consider it a form of brainwashing. I mean, yeah, it is. It, it it's, is. it's not something that. Uh, I, I think it's something that all humans do. You're not even. We realizing just don't even realize. It. We they do say it. it's whether, associating. Yeah. They say whether Obama was trained to do it or not. That supposedly he's an absolute master at it. Yeah. That's what I've heard. Yes. NLP. Yeah. Uh, but it's associating uh, motions, motions and different tones of voice and all this stuff with different feelings, and then you can just use those motions to invoke those feelings. Hmm. So it, it, it's using body language for a form of uh, invoking Suggestive, different feelings in yeah. people. Manipulation. I, I think yeah. it's important to realize when people are using this stuff yeah. and to realize all these different forms yeah. that are used. To, so to can, recognize yeah. them because then you can when, discern, you, right. when you recognize them, if people are trying to use yeah. them on you, you kind of just sit back oh, and you're like, This okay. is kind of funny. This goes back actually like, well, to sophistry, right? The, the, oh, yeah. Yeah, the Greeks and sophistry essentially. Yeah. Uh, there's, uh, speaking on what you're talking about though, you have metacognition, 
which is essentially being aware of your thought processes. And essential and, and why metacognition is so important is that we all have different things our, our brains work a certain way. And so if we if you can understand how your brain how your thinking process works, you can recognize when you're when you come across brainwashing because we've all been brainwashed. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and you can you can then use that information well, to change yourself. So I, that that brings us back to to Tesla. be cognitive of your your own process thinking processes. Tesla talked about how anytime that he had something going through his mind, he tried to recognize where it originated. What? Hmm. Why am I thinking that? Was it you know? Was it something that happened years ago? Was it something just happened? The, the, what, the spark that made it happen. Yeah, sort of like, it, 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 yeah, it's it, it's yeah. It's always really interesting to think about like, hey, why am I thinking this? Like what? And it's important when. It's important too for um, like anytime you have something really bugging you. To, if you can get down to what made me think that, it's really calming. Oh, I, I realize why I'm thinking about that. It, it's to me, it's calming. This, this I, you know, I've that before. Yeah, this quite ties a bit, into. Yeah. I was telling Steve uh, a couple of weeks ago. I think it was actually like sharing his personal experience tied exactly to uh, what we're saying here. Like my background uh, in the Marine Corps was CQB, so I know how to shoot. Spent a lot of time shooting and know what, what the headspace is of someone mm -hmm. is shooting, you're, uh, you're sh practicing shooting people in confined spaces and in tight uh, uh, time lapse, time, time frames. And uh, when That's you do- That's what CQB stands for, right? Close, close quarters battle, yeah. So the point is, is when you're doing this, it's your job and you're, it's, it's what you do all week long, every week. It's, you're, you're constantly thinking about shooting some, a failure drill uh, two to the chest and one to the brain housing group, you know? That's what you're thinking all the time. And to take you back further, I, uh, I was an amateur fighter before the military, so I have boxing in my background. So now move fast forward, you know, uh, 10 years and 15 years, 20 years, and now I'm at a space where I don't want to, I don't want to constantly be thinking about conflict and about hurting people or these kind of things. So I've reprogrammed the way I think, and what's important for me anyway, is now I realize that all I do, uh, I go home and uh, with family and spend two days on the on the range. Uh, I can I realize that after two days on the range, I come off and my headspace is right back where it was in 2000 when I was on a CQB team. I'm thinking about shooting somebody in the face. You know, mm -hmm. what I mean? if I watch too much UFC, or as soon as I I'm watching UFC, as soon as I realize, all of a sudden I'm starting to think back. You know, like you know. Uh, elbowing somebody in the face again, you know, I don't like that. I, what I'm trying to say is that I, I'm aware of when the yeah. mind space goes back there, and it's probably yeah. only because of my history with it and my conscious decision to, to distance myself from that way of thinking. Can you unbrainwash yourself? I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm saying. I think is. I think it's important, yeah. like John was saying, to, to recognize, recognize uh, your thought process and processes and why they work the way they do and before you can you can change them and I, I, I have a similar path from John I wasn't uh, amateur fighter or CQB but I was in the military uh, I was I was into wrestling in high school uh, grappling uh, and that kind of thing and shooting uh, we used to drive around and and shoot out of the back of trucks and stuff right <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and that that's the kind of mindset that you grow up in, I think, in in conservative circles. And and I get the same thing a lot of times when, when you watch uh, U, uh, UFC or or go to the range or something. You get that flashback to that kind of that mindset when and I have to be conscious of it in order to pull myself back out of that and and you know looking looking at uh, boot camp is an extreme example of brainwashing mm -hmm. but we get the same thing in in our schools for 12 years uh, I remember because uh, I went to a private school luckily for junior high and high school and so I learned critical thinking techniques 
I, I took, I actually had a logic class oh, that's cool. and that yeah, kind of, and, cool. and that kind of thing, you know, so, uh, grammar can be very important to critical thinking Absolutely. as well. Uh, understanding what you're actually saying and what people are actually saying to you. So when I went into boot camp, people, I remember a few days after we got there, uh, the drill instructor, well, in, in Navy, they're called, uh, you got your chiefs and stuff. It, okay. It's they're not actually called drill instructors in the Navy boot camp, but uh, he came out and criticized a bunch of people on some very minor issues. Mm -hmm. Their their gig line wasn't lined up right or something like that, mm -hmm. and he just pulled them out of the out of formation and said, "Get out of here! You're you're kicked out or whatever." Right. And people were like freaking out about that, like, "Oh my God! They're they're kicking him out for that little offense." Mm -hmm. But I recognized, because of my background in critical thinking, they weren't kicking them out for minor offenses. They were kicking them out because we did a drug test a few days earlier, mm -hmm. and they had, they happened to have popped. Right. Okay. <laughs> so they're just you know. One and they were using they're, it. They're, yeah, they were using that as a brainwashing yeah. technique yeah. to to control us in boot yeah. camp. Yeah. Right. Yeah, just, just simply scare you. You know, it's just they they had an excuse to scare you. Um, I was uh, watching a, can't remember what it's called for life me, but it was a documentary on, done on a commune that was up in Oregon in the 80s, and it ended up not working out. But so that, that the whole thing doesn't, you know, the the background doesn't matter. But so the kids after the commune broke up, you know, their parents ended up just kind of sending them to like regular school, and they, so they were all of a sudden now put into public school. And the the one part that I was watching, the girl was talking about how like the First day she's there and they're doing the Pledge of Allegiance and she just tripped her out because she'd never done that before in her entire life. She goes, wait, why is everybody looking at the flag and like saying stuff? Like I, like she did not understand it at all. You what know? a lot like, of people don't realize yeah. is that was specifically made yeah. for brainwashing. Yeah, yeah. That uh, that was the express, the expressed. The Francis, Francis. Yeah, yeah they, Francis Bellamy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he wrote it. Uh, some people say to sell flags is he was, he, he was a... He sold, he sold flags. Yeah. He was a self-professed Christian socialist. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but the other, the other side of that is that he created it to brainwash children into the Service. socialist ideal. Mm -hmm. As he saw it. Yeah. That, uh, and actually there was a few changes made to it before it hit regular circulation, which he wasn't as happy about because it muted some of the effects of the, the brainwashing that he was going for. Uh -huh. uh, and then, of course, in the 50s, Under God was added. Yeah, because those dirty, com godless commies, you know? Like, that's, <laughs> you know, that sort of, that, I mean, More that, brainwashing. Yeah, more yeah. Like, yeah, and we were, we were talking about music. And people early. get a, a real visceral uh, feeling from people talking about uh, removing under God in the Pledge of Allegiance yeah, and stuff true. like that, and those those are the, those are oh well, I don't need to set that there. Those are the kind of things that the government wants. Mm -hmm. oh, the, yeah. the, yeah. the 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 you know the elites in charge. Mm -hmm. They want that kind of discussion because if you're discussing whether under God should be in the what Pledge of Allegiance or not, you're not discussing why do they have a saying this in the first place. Right. Yeah. You know, and uh, like let's say uh, same with marriage, right? Okay, like, is bickering over who can marry, right? Right. right. Oh, yeah. instead of like why the why fuck is the state involved in right? marriage, right? Yeah. Why, yeah. You know that, and that goes back to what was it? Uh, interracial marriages in the South, right? Is that that's why they decided to come with licenses for it because they didn't want interracial couples, and uh, but you know uh, I was thinking about uh, just popping my head was like flag burning. That's another one too. Now, yeah. I'm not really going to go, I, you know, I don't really care to go out and get a flag and burn it. I don't really think it does a damn thing. But, you know, when people do do that, you know, it's, it becomes a, like, you know, the, top, the, the, the topic on the, you know, CNN for the next half hour. Well, somebody, in, you know, involved in a protest burned a flag. And now that, that, that is worthy of 10 minutes, but not the reason <laughs> why they did it in the first place. You know, yeah. it's, it's whether or not they should be able to, not why they did it. You know. I've got a question. So if you programmed a robot hmm. to have okay. sex with you, hmm. would that be a form of brainwashing? 
Yeah, Would I mean, it does have a brain. Oh, is it a, holy it, shit, look what time. Oh. 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 Not again. That's a good one. We got to remember that. Dude, we that need is to good. That that's down. good. <laughs> We're going to yeah, that's yeah. something. That is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next <laughs> episode. Yeah. yeah, next episode. That is the topic. <laughs> that is. Or, maybe not the topic. Yeah. But that's going to be We'll get to it. We're going to get to robots. Have a good night. Good night. Take it easy.